Good morning, students, and welcome back. Previous session, we have completed Unit Seven, which was Basics of Java FX and Animations. Today, we want to start Unit Eight, which is Java FX UI Controls and Multimedia. We'll start with the UI Controls introduction. So, Java FX provides many UI controls. To develop a GUI based application and that are basically needed for creating a user interface and this is the list of uh, UI controls that we are gonna see in this unit so label button checkbox radio button text field text area thumb box which is the drop-down list then the list view <coughs> scroll bar slider video and audio and so on so this is actually the hierarchical structure that Java's, uh, Java FX has for all the UI controls if you look at the button here then button checkbox and radio button are actually subclass of button base class Whereas button base and a label, these two are subclasses of labeled class, and this labeled class is actually the subclass of control. Now, this is a hierarchical structure, even labeled, scroll bar, slider, text input, list view, comma box, all these are the subclasses, either directly or indirectly. Are the subclasses of control class and this hierarchical structure is created because of having some few uh, having few common properties to be defined in the parent class and all subclasses extend those properties yeah so <clears throat> we'll look at the controls one by one and at that time you'll come to know what are those common properties defined in the super class and those properties are extended in the sub subclasses okay so let's take this example to understand all those ui controls what i think is uh, let us create one form form of um, recording the data and that uh, and that form actually covers all these UI controls that we want to see so I've created one form to have or to have a database for person details where we have a name then there will be text field address will be the text area gender will be the radio button I'm going to uh, have age with the slider nationality with the combo box drop-down list travel history with the list view then symptoms with the check boxes and then either cancel or add details are the buttons all these left side are the labels and when I click add detail we do not have any database right now but what we are gonna do is when we click on add details we are going to fetch all these details and display on the right side so that's what the plan is and this application will cover all those uh, UI controls that we need to cover in this unit just two things remains video and audio are not covered here and that will be the new example okay so this is a plan now how are we gonna create this entire window so we'll start with the border pen as we know that border pen has few sections top section bottom section left section right section center section and so on so we are going to use some of those sections we'll create a border pen and then we will use the top section of that border pen now within that top section we are gonna add v box because we are having two texts one below the other so vertically placed different text here similarly we are gonna use right section of that border pen 
that will be again v box because vertically vertically we are going to place multiple text here so there are multiple lines with the text and at last <clears throat> we are gonna use the left section of that border pen and this left section will have the grid now we will use grid to organize all these fields properly okay so we'll have a grid with multiple rows and columns and we will place all these ui controls in a particular cell within a grid so let's have a look at uh, the demo file of this code so i'm moving to the eclipse ide where i have already written all the code we will learn this or we will understand this code line by line unit 8 is my main class it extends application class so i have a start method override overridden and we have the primary state directly what we will do is we will create a scene we add that scene in a primary stage we show the primary stage and we have the main border pen we will add this border pen in the scene okay so start let's start with the border pen we have a border pen then what we want is we let's say we want to prepare a header right now so we will have one vertical box and all the elements within vertical box will have five pixel space in between and we call it header now what we do is we also set padding for the header on all four sides there will be 10 pixel padding and this header we are going to add in a top section of our border pen okay so that that actually creates the structure of a header now within this header let us have those two text so we'll create text header one with this title covid19 scan database i'm going to set font for this the font name is courier i'm going to make it bold and italic also with 20 pixel font size then i'm going to create a second text header this is a second line person details okay same font bold but this is a regular one it is not italic and the size is 14 somewhat smaller than this one so we have text header 1 we have text header 2 and let us add these two text in the header that is our v box okay so we have created this much part we have created header let me save this code and let me run once so we have the output this is how we have created a border pen within a border pen we are using top section right now within a top section we have v box and in that v box we have first line and we have second line this is the current output okay so let's close this one and go back to the presentation slide now let us start creating <coughs> that form and let us start using the ui controls one by one but we have already used label and a button so let us start with it because that it is much familiar with us so we start with the label label is nothing but the area where we show the normal a short text okay now label is often used to um, show a label for other ui controls like text field or radio buttons or something okay and label and button these are to UI controls which uh, actually has many common properties also and that's why those are the subclasses of labeled class now this labeled class has all those common properties like uh, graphic property alignment property text property and so on graphic property is nothing but the a graphic element that you want to display with this label it may be any shape or image or other control okay 
So we will see this uh, graphic property with button later. Okay. So that's labeled class and a label class. So let's have a look at labeled class first because it has few common properties. So this is a property list which is defined in the labeled class. It has alignment property which defines the alignment of the label text. It has content display property which also defines the alignment with respect to the graphics. Then it has a graphic property which defines whatever graphic you want to display with label. Then it has a graphic text gap property which actually defines gap between graphics and a text. Okay. Then there is text fill property which actually defines the color of your label. Then it has a text property which actually stores the string then underline property and a wrap text property whether you want to underline your label or not <clears throat> and whether you want to wrap your text within a size or not okay so these are the common properties of label labeled class next is the label class look label already extends labeled class which means all those common properties are inherited here now apart from those properties we have three different constructors here the first one no argument constructor which will create empty label the second one has a one parameter string so that is simple string that you want to apply to this label and then the third one has two uh, arguments the first one is the string and the second one is the graphic that you want to have alongside your text so let us create few labels in the form because as we have seen uh, we are going to have multiple fields in the form and all those fields has few labels so I'm moving back to my IDE and let us start creating a form so as we discussed we are going to create a grid pen for our form so I'll create a grid pen. I'll have 10 pixel padding on all four sides. I will also define horizontal gap and vertical gap between all the cells. And I will add that form in my bordered pen left section. So I've added a form and that form is a grid pen. But that grid pen does not have anything yet. Uh, what we will do is we will start adding labels there so I'm going to create multiple labels here okay so I've created multiple labels like name address gender age nationality travel history symptoms and so on so all these are labels are added in a grid pen which is a form and when we add these labels these nodes we define which cell are we going to add those labels so <clears throat> all these labels will be added in the first column which is the zeroth column so column number will be zero everywhere okay right and we are going to add these labels in a different row every time so zeroth row first row second row third row fourth row fifth row and a sixth row so this is how we are going to add these labels in a grid pen let me save and run this code to have output how it looks so we have created a grid and within that grid we have created first column and that column has six different six or seven different rows and each row as these labels the so name address gender age nationality travel history and symptoms all these are labels we have created these labels anonymously so later on we are not going to access these labels okay so we directly add these labels without having any instance variable for these so that's it for label let me close this output 
and go back to the presentation slide. <clears throat> Next thing we want to see is the button. As I said, button is also we have covered earlier, but we will understand something in deep today. Button is a control that triggers an action event when it is clicked, right? And there are multiple types of buttons in JavaFX. We have seen normal button, regular button, but there are toggle buttons, there are checkboxes, there are radio buttons, and so we will see these one by one. But all these buttons and a label has common features, common properties. So buttons has common features and those common features are defined in button base class and few common properties which is defined in the labeled class so actually button extends button base and button base extends labeled class labeled class has a property and the button base has on action property so when you click on a button actually it is going to trigger an action event so to handle that action event we define handler and we need to store that handler somewhere so we have on action property let's have a look at that structure here so this is how that hierarchical structure looks we have a button class okay you we have a button class which has three different constructors one is the no argument constructor which will create empty button then there is a constructor with one parameter string which is just the text you want to display on the button and then there is a constructor with two parameters one is a string text another one is the graphic as we discussed earlier graphic is nothing but any shape or image or any node that you want to have just alongside with your text so these are the three constructors now button extends button base class and button base class has one property on action now this on action property actually stores the uh, object of event handler and to be specific it is action event in terms of button and this button base class extends labeled class so it has all those properties common properties like uh, uh, alignment graphic property graphic gate property text property text field property then underline and wrap text also and so on yeah so this is the structure of or hierarchical structure of a button in javafx so let's move back to ide and let us create few buttons there coming back to the code and let us create few buttons here I have that code earlier so let me uncomment and explain so I'm going to create one button button to have add text okay so I'm using a constructor here with two parameters first one is normal text that I want to display and the second one is the graphic look as I said in in the place of graphic we can have shape we can have image we can have another node or something so I'm using an image here I have that image downloaded and it is there in the test folder so what I'll do is I will use image view object and I'll pass that as a graphic property of button class okay so I'm going to create new image view object and I will access my icon add icon here so that creates a button <clears throat> now we can have empty space or a gap between this image and the text and that we can set by using graphic text get so what this will do is it will have 10 pixel gap between this image and the text now by default this image will be displayed on the left side and you can have this text on the right side of that image 
so that's my button add similarly I have also created button cancel so cancel is the text and then cancel icon again we have the 10 pixel gap between text and the icon image and then what we do is we add these two buttons button add and button cancel in our grid which is a form so zeroth column seventh row I'm going to have add button and in the same row seventh next column I'm going to add the cancel button okay so this is how we set or we add those two buttons now additional one line here I want to have my cancel button to be aligned right side so I'm going to set horizontal alignment for this cancel button to be right okay so let me save this code runs run it once now this is gonna create two buttons so we have two button here this is first button this is second button add button and a cancel button and whatever this circular plus and minus sign you are looking here are actually images and those are the graphic properties okay so we have two buttons here let me close this one and show you something here so by default your text is displaying on the right side of your icon or in other words we can say all the graphics are aligned to the left side always so if you want to have your alignment of graphics something different then you can have set content display property content display property of your uh, node and content display to be right so what happens is your image goes to right side now now we are adding we are changing this in the add button so what will happen is plus sign will come to the right side now <clears throat> okay the default icon is on the left side but here in the add button we have icon on the right side so that's how you can change your alignment and alignment values are left right top bottom and so on so like that you can align your graphic node or graphic image whatever you want let me comment this one right now because we do not want to have that uh, that thing in the output right now so that's how we add a button going back to presentation and the next slide let's have a look at checkbox now so starting from this one everything comes as a new part for you till now we have already seen label and buttons but checkbox we haven't seen yet so let us understand it carefully we all know what is checkbox checkbox is used for uh, having a user to make a selection okay so like button checkbox also inherits two common properties from the button base class which is on action and two properties from the labeled class which is a text graphic alignment graphic text gap text fill and so on additionally it provides a selection property so checkbox itself contains one property which is selection property so <clears throat> let's have a look at the structure hierarchical structure is something like this checkbox extends button base and button base extends label class labeled class a checkbox has uh, two constructors one no argument constructor and second one with one argument to be string and a checkbox class itself has one property selected that defines whether this checkbox is selected or not so it is just a boolean type property and it extends button base class so button base class has on action uh, property also which means you can have event handler for this one whenever user checks it 
action event is being performed and uh, if you are creating event handler for this then you can have whatever code you want to perform there so that's a checkbox let us create few checkboxes in our form so going back to code and if you remember the structure that we want to create there were symptoms and those symptoms were having a checkboxes so let us create a checkbox for different different symptoms let's say fever is one symptom for coronavirus dry cough tired nails and so on <clears throat> so what we are gonna do is we are gonna create multiple checkboxes for all those symptoms so we create one checkbox and we label it with fever we create another checkbox and we label it with dry cough and so on so we have number of checkboxes now to align or to have properly placed this checkboxes what I'm going to create is I'm going to have a flow pen flow pen which will have 5 pixel gap in between all the nodes and within that flow pen I'm going to add all my checkboxes now I'm not uh, defining any uh, flow here so by default flow is the horizontal one so all these checkboxes will be placed horizontally now and then what I'll do is I will place this horizontal pen or oh sorry flow pen in my form which is a grid pen so we are actually creating a nested form we have border pen within that we have grid and within that grid we have a flow pen so understand this nesting properly so in in that form we are going to add this flow pen symptoms flow pen and we are going to add that in a column number one row number six so let me save it and run this code to just have it on the screen so this is where we have those checkboxes okay and checkboxes works properly you can select any number of checkboxes you want fine so <clears throat> that is the checkbox now as I, as we have discussed that checkbox has on action property so we can create a handler for that so we will create one handler handler event handler object and we are going to use lambda notation here so e points to the method and within that method whatever we want to write a code we can we will exp uh, I'll explain this later but we have one handler here okay now we can have single handler for all those checkboxes so that's why we are creating this handler separately and then what we do is we set on action property to that handler for every checkbox whatever number of checkboxes you do have you set the same handler to all those checkboxes right so let's have a look at what that handler does <clears throat> so within that handler I'm going to create a string just to check which checkboxes are selected so whatever checkbox is selected I'm going to append that string in this str variable and then I simply display that str variable in the console that's it right now we are simply displaying the strings in the console so let me save and run this code so let me make some space because we want to have a look at the console also so when I click here it is going to fire action event right and action event 
is being handled by this handler and that handler this handler okay and that handler is going to check whether fever checkbox is selected yes or no if it is then append fever in your str variable and display that str so in the console output we have fever now fever is already selected if i select dry cough then what will happen this dry cough will fire action event that action event is being handled by this handler so this handler will execute this code now in this code again i'm going to check whether fever is selected yes so i will have fever then i'll check whether dry cough is selected yes so i will also have dry cough in the str appended and that's the reason second line has both fever and dry cough and if i select the third one then on the third line we will be having all three symptoms here if i deselect this one then it will remove it if i deselect fever it will remove it we will only have the dry cough here so that's how action event is being handled here okay checkboxes are nothing but kind of buttons and buttons has action event and we can handle those events by creating a handler like this <coughs> so that's what a checkbox is let me go back to the presentation slide and the next one we want to look at is the radio button radio buttons are nothing but simple kind of buttons with few characteristics and that characteristic is it is kind of a toggle button so you can toggle between the property of radio buttons generally we define radio buttons to uh, to give an offer to user where user can select only one option so <clears throat> radio button is a subclass of toggle button so it toggles its state and the toggle button and the radio button has a one difference only toggle button is look by looking it is normal button whereas radio button has a circular uh, look and feel okay so if you want to create a group of all those radio buttons because as i said generally we define radio button where user can select only one so we need to create a group of radio buttons and to create a group of radio button we need to define toggle group property okay and we need to also have toggle group object we will see that how we can do it in the example and then there is a selected property of radio button by which you can check whether that radio button is selected or not okay so this is what the hierarchy actually because radio button extends toggle button and that toggle button extends button base and button base extends the labeled class so in that hierarchy all properties are inherited now let's focus on radio button right now <coughs> radio button has a constructor no argument constructor so it will create empty radio button or you can pass text here which will be the simple text to be displayed now it extends toggle button so toggle button has selected property which is a boolean one whether it is selected or not that's it and it has a toggle group property which takes toggle group object okay so we only create one group and set the same group to multiple radio buttons then there are toggle button constructors but we are not going to use those constructors right now we will be using radio button constructor directly so let us create few radio buttons here 
Now in our form we have a gender property where we can create radio buttons okay so let me create radio buttons here so we create first radio button and we label it with male we create second radio button and we label it with female now by default I want to have one radio button selected so what I'll do is for that radio button I will set selected property to be true so by default this one will be there selected now we have two different radio buttons we need to make a group of these two so we will create toggle group object here and then we are going to set toggle group property of our radio buttons male and female with this group object we have, that we have created just now which is this one so we will set toggle group property of both radio buttons to the same group here and this makes a single group of these two radio buttons and because of that single group user will be able to select only one at a time so that is the toggle group now as we are having multiple radio buttons and we need to arrange it properly again we will create a flow pen within that flow pen we are going to add those radio buttons so horizontally those two radio buttons will be placed and that flow pen we are going to add in a grid which is a form so column number one row number two that's how we add that radio button so let me save and run this code to just have a look at how those radio button looks so we have that radio button here male and female male is by default selected and if I click on female now then as it is in a same group I'll be able to select female male will automatically be deselected so wherever you click you will be able to select only one because of toggle group okay now as <clears throat> it has a on action property also so we can have handler for that okay so we have rb male and rb female two radio buttons the radio button male radio button female so we can set its on action property with lambda function and what we do is we simply check whether it is selected or not if it is selected then on the console i'm going to uh, i'm going to just have the message okay so we define the gender is male gender is female that's it and this will be displayed on the console but right now we are simply displaying it on console but here you can have whatever code you want okay so let me save and run this code <clears throat> so now if i click here on this radio button then on the console i'll be having that message so let me click and we have that message so if i click on mail we will be having that message here that's happening because when we click here it is going to fire action action event action event is being handled by event handler that we define here with on action property okay let me close this one that's the radio button going back to slides next thing we want to see is the text field okay text field is the normal text field where we can display some text or user can enter few text and so now text field is a subclass of text input control okay and uh, <clears throat> whenever user 
focuses on that text field and presses the enter from the keyboard it is going to fire the action event so we do have action event for all the text fields also let's have a structure uh, have a look at the structure so text field has few properties alignment property so alignment of a text within your text field then preferred column count which actually defines what will be the width of your text field to be shown on action property which is nothing but the event handler object then there are constructors no argument constructor will create empty text field and then a text field with one argument string so def by default if you want to display some string there you can have it here those are the constructors <coughs> now text field extends text input control class and that class has few more properties text property which is the text of your text field and then editable property whether you allow user to edit that text field or not so editable is the boolean property by default it is true so every text field will be editable if you make it false then user will not be able to edit the text in the text field so let us create one text field have a look at how we can have it on the form so here i do have that text field defined so we define a text field with no argument here we add that text field in the first column zero row, which is actually the name okay so let me save and run this code so on the name just in front of name label we have the text field here and it is editable by default so i can have anything here user can write anything in this text field okay now if you want to have a default text already then instead of going for no argument constructor you can have a constructor with one parameter so this text will be there by default and if you want your user not to allow to edit it then what you do is you simply set editable property to false so i am setting default text there and i am also setting editable property to false so what happens is let me run the code you will have a look at that default text here but user you will not be able to edit this one look i am trying to type here but nothing is being typed so that's how you make it editable false let me go back to the original one no text and allow user to edit now in that text field we can set on action so that is actually setting the event handler lambda notation and in that what i do is when i when user clicks on the enter oh sorry when user presses the enter button we are going to fetch the text of that text field and we will display it in the console okay that's what we are going to do right now we fetch the text using get text method and we simply display it on the console so let me save run this code have some space on the right side and now i'm going to type something here so i've typed name and now when i press enter button it is going to have that action event and that action event is going to fetch this text and it will display it on the console so let me press enter yeah so when i press enter 
it fetches this text and it is displaying on the console here okay so that is the action event on text field so going back to presentation slide so let us stop here for today let us quickly revise what all the um, ui controls that we have seen <coughs> revise those with the output that we have here so we have started with the ui controls list of ui controls and then we discussed that we are gonna create one application which is kind of gathering information form and that form will cover all those controls and when we start that when we start creating that form we started with the first ui control which is label all these are the labels name address gender age nationality all these are labels labels so there is a label class it extends the labeled class because labeled class has few common properties like alignment text graphic property underline property and so on and then second ui control we have seen was the button even button class extends labeled class so it has those common properties so we have created two but two buttons here and at the time of creating button we look at the graphic property so this these are the image files we have loaded as a graphic so labeled label button at the time of button we have also seen button base then we have seen check boxes check boxes also extends button base then we have seen radio buttons radio button extends toggle button toggle button extends button base and all these are the button examples and then at last we have seen this text field so these are the ui controls that we have covered today rest we will cover in the next session thank you for joining